Hi, my name is Carol DeSantis. I'm an epidemiologist in the Surveillance and Health Services Research Program, and I'm glad you've joined me today as I go over some highlights from our recent edition of Breast Cancer Facts and Figures. I'll be taking questions today at the end of the presentation, but feel free to go ahead and enter them into the Q&A box as they come up. Breast Cancer Facts and Figures is one of eight service publications produced by the Surveillance and Health Services Research Program. It is published every other year in October. The report contains statistics on breast cancer incidence, mortality, survival and screening, as well as updated information on breast cancer risk factors, early detection, and treatment. The report can be ordered from Society Mart, and the PDF can be downloaded from cancer.org. We also published a companion article to the report in the CA Journal that contains additional information and statistics, including the breast cancer trends by hormone receptor status and state-level data on the percentage of breast cancers diagnosed at localized and advanced stages. The article can be downloaded for free at the journal's website. There are several types of breast cancer. An in situ diagnosis indicates that the abnormal cells have not spread beyond the area where they developed. Invasive breast cancers, on the other hand, are cancers that have broken through the ductal or glandular walls where they originated and grown into the surrounding breast tissue. More than 80% of in situ breast cancers are ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS. Not all DCIS are destined to become invasive breast cancer. <clears throat> Studies suggest that about one-third and possibly more DCIS will progress to invasive cancer if left untreated. About 12% of in situ cases are lobular carcinoma in situ. LCIS is actually not a true breast cancer or even a precancer, but women with LCIS are 7 to 12 times more likely to develop breast cancer than women without LCIS. Breast cancer is increasingly considered to be not just one disease, but a group of diseases distinguished by different molecular subtypes, risk factors, clinical behaviors, and responses to treatment. Four main subtypes have been identified using gene expression profiles. They can also generally be defined by the presence or absence of estrogen receptors, abbreviated ER, progesterone receptors, PR, and human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, abbreviated HER2. Overall, luminal A is the most common type of breast cancer, and HER2 enriched is the least common. Basal-like breast cancer, which are mostly triple negative, are more common in black women, premenopausal women, and those with a BRCA1 gene mutation. ACS estimated numbers of breast cancer cases and deaths for 2013 are shown in this slide. Breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in women other than skin cancer. More than 230,000 U.S. women are expected to be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer this year and nearly 65,000 women will be diagnosed with in situ breast cancer. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in women following lung cancer. Nearly 40,000 women are expected to die from breast cancer this year. We also provide case and death estimates for several age groups. Most breast cancer cases and deaths occur among women over the age of 50, 79% of cases and 88% of deaths. This slide describes a cancer-free woman's risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer. The lifetime risk is 12.3%, or one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lifetime. Lifetime risk reflects an average woman's risk from birth to death and includes the possibility that she may die of another cause before she would have been diagnosed with breast cancer. We also describe risk over a 10-year time period. For example, a 50-year-old cancer-free woman has a 2.3% chance of developing breast cancer before she turns 60. Another way to say that is one in 43 women aged 50 will be diagnosed in the next 10 years. Breast cancer risk increases with age. This slide shows incidence and death rates by race and ethnicity for the most recent time period. White women have the highest incidence rate for breast cancer, followed by black women. However, the reverse is true for mortality. 
<clears throat> death rates are higher in blacks than whites. Asian Pacific Islander women have the lowest incidence and death rate of any racial and ethnic group. On this slide, we have breast cancer incidence and death rates by age on the horizontal axis in white and black women. Both incidence and death rates generally increase with increasing age, except for the dip in incidence rates in women over age 80. Breast cancer incidence rates are higher in white women for most age groups. However, incidence rates are actually higher in black women before age 40. On the next two slides, I show geographic variation in breast cancer death rates in white and black women. This slide is the map for white women. For non-Hispanic white women, death rates are highest in the West, Midwest, and Mid-Atlantic regions of the U.S. New Jersey has the highest breast cancer death rate for white women, and Hawaii has the lowest. This map shows breast cancer death rates for black women. Data are not shown for states with fewer than 25 deaths over the five-year period. Death rates are highest for black women in some of the southern and central states. Tennessee has the highest breast cancer death rate, and Rhode Island has the lowest. In the report, there is also a table with state-level data on incidence and death rates for white, black, and Hispanic women for states with sufficient numbers. This slide presents trends and incidence rates. In situ breast cancer is shown on the left and invasive breast cancer on the right. For both, there is a sharp rise in incidence during the 1980s, particularly among women ages 50 and older, which are shown in the top lines of both figures. This rise in incidence reflects increased diagnoses from the uptake of mammography screening. Since 1999, rates of in situ breast cancer have stabilized in women over age 50 but they continue to slowly increase in younger women. For invasive breast cancer, incidence declined sharply between 2002 and 2003, which followed the release of results from the Women's Health Initiative trial that found combined menopausal hormone use was linked to increased risk of breast cancer. Since 2004, the overall rate of invasive breast cancer has been stable. However, incidence trends vary by race and ethnicity. Incidence rates are available for black and white women going back to 1973, when the SEER registry program was established, and since 1992 for other racial and ethnic groups. Although rates have been higher for white women than black women, recently that gap has narrowed substantially. From 2006 to 2010, the most recent five years of data, rates increased slightly in black women while rates remain stable in white, Asian Pacific Islander, and American Indian Alaska Native women. Breast cancer incidence rates decline slightly for Hispanic women. This slide shows trends in breast cancer death rates by race and ethnicity. The overall breast cancer death rate has dropped 34% from 1990 to 2010. The decline has occurred in all racial and ethnic groups except for American Indian, Alaska Native women. Despite these declines, the gap in death rates between black and white women has widened over time, and breast cancer death rates are now 41% higher in blacks than whites. Two of the reasons for the breast cancer mortality disparity between black and white women are that black women are more likely to be diagnosed at later stages, and they have poorer survival in every stage of diagnosis. In the top figure, the graph shows that only 52% of breast cancers are diagnosed as local stage in black women, compared to 62% among white women. A greater proportion of breast cancers are diagnosed as regional or distant stage in black women, which means the tumors are larger or have already spread. When breast cancer is caught early, survival is very good, 99% in white women and 94% in black women, as shown in the lower figure. Survival is lower for regional and distant stages of breast cancer, and for each of these stages, it is lower for black women than white women. This figure shows how breast cancer survival has increased over time. Yet, as we saw in the previous slide, survival remains lower in black women. 
The disparity is largely thought to reflect differences in socioeconomic status, which limits access to early detection, diagnosis, and treatment. Black women are also more likely to be diagnosed with more aggressive and harder to treat forms of breast cancer, including triple negative breast cancer. Breast cancer survival rates for additional racial groups are provided on this slide. On the previous two slides, we showed relative survival, which compares the survival of breast cancer patients to women of the same age and race without breast cancer. In this slide, we show cause-specific survival, which is the percent of breast cancer patients that have not died from breast cancer. We use cause-specific survival because we do not have data on normal life expectancy for these additional racial groups. Breast cancer survival is highest for Asian women, particularly Japanese women have the highest survival rate. In addition to all of this data, the report also provides information summarizing the current research on breast cancer risk factors. This slide contains a list of the major risk factors for breast cancer. Many of these are thought to influence breast cancer risk by affecting the lifetime exposure of breast tissue to hormones including early menarche, late menopause, obesity, and hormone use. Some of these factors are more strongly associated with risk, such as the presence of a BRCA1 or 2 gene mutation and high breast density, while other factors, such as alcohol use, are associated with small increases in risk. Obesity is an interesting factor because it increases the risk of developing breast cancer after menopause, but is actually associated with lower risk of breast cancer before menopause. This may reflect the fact that, as I discussed earlier, breast cancer is actually made up of several subtypes. The majority of known risk factors are most strongly linked to the hormone receptor positive luminal breast cancers. Understanding risk factors for the less common subtypes is an active area of research. We also review several factors that have not been found to be associated with breast cancer risk. Although many studies have and continue to examine the relationship between diet and breast cancer, there's currently no conclusive evidence that diet influence, influences breast cancer risk. It is important to note that many women with breast cancer do not have any known risk factors. Also, there are many women with multiple risk factors that do not develop breast cancer. Although many of these factors are not modifiable, some are, and provide strategies for women to try and reduce their risk of breast cancer. These strategies include maintaining a healthy weight, being physically active, not smoking, minimizing alcohol use, breastfeeding for a year or more, and avoiding or limiting the use of menopausal hormones. In addition to these health strategies, ACS recommends that women should begin regular mammography screening at age 40. It is also recommended that women receive a clinical breast exam, preferably before their annual mammogram. For a small group of women at particularly high risk of breast cancer, ACS recommends screening with MRI in addition to mammography. Mammography can detect breast cancer before it can be felt. Randomized controlled trials concluded that mammography lowers the risk of breast cancer death by at least 15 to 20 percent. Early detection also leads to a greater range of treatment options, including less extensive surgery and the use of chemotherapy with fewer serious side effects, and sometimes the option even to forego chemotherapy. However, mammography screening does have potential harms, and I will review them briefly. First, the risk of false positive results. Sometimes mammography leads to follow-up exams, including biopsies, when there is no cancer. This is known as a false positive. About 10% of women are recalled from each screening exam, but only 5% of these women will actually be found to have cancer. 95% of the recalled women will have a false positive. Overdiagnosis is the detection of breast cancer that would not have progressed or otherwise be detected had a woman not undergone screening. Estimates vary greatly on the extent of overdiagnosis that occurs with breast cancer. There is currently no way to determine which breast cancers are life-threatening. Third, the amount of radiation used for mammography today is very small, and any risk associated with it is considered to be minimal. And finally, mammography is not 100% effective. Some breast cancers will be missed by mammography, and some that are detected will still have poor prognosis. 
Despite these limitations, ACS feels that the balance of benefit to harm strongly supports the value of regular breast screening for women 40 and older. The report contains data on U.S. mammography screening rates. This slide shows data from the 2010 National Health Interview Survey. 67% of women reported having a mammogram in the past two years. Women with less than a high school degree, without health insurance, and immigrants have the lowest screening rates. Screening rates as reported on national surveys are similar by race and ethnicity, with Asian and Hispanic women having slightly lower rates. We also present trends in screening rates by age and poverty status. In each age group, screening rates are much lower for poor and near poor women compared to women in the highest income group. 2012 state level screening data from the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System are also included in the Breast Cancer Facts and Figures report, but the table is quite large, so I have not included it in these slides. We also provide information on breast cancer treatment. Most breast cancer patients will have some type of surgery, which is often combined with other treatments, such as radiation therapy, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, and or targeted therapy. In the final section of our publication, we provide information on what ACS is doing about breast cancer. ACS invests more money in breast cancer research than any other cancer type. From 1971 to 2010, the Society awarded nearly $451 million in research and training grants associated with breast cancer. Recently, ACS has changed how it reports funding by cancer type. Since 2011, the Society has awarded another $46 million in breast cancer research. We also provide examples of currently funded breast cancer research grants and a summary of recently published breast cancer research by our intramural research programs. Finally, we review ACS CAN efforts related to breast cancer policies and funding. I would like to take just a moment to acknowledge and thank all of the people that have contributed to this report. The production of breast cancer facts and figures is a collaborative effort and involves ACS staff across numerous departments as well as the contributions of external experts. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I have time now to take a few questions, and also please feel free to email or call me if you have more detailed questions. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions? If anyone does have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the Q&A box. I'll wait just a moment. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions from anyone. Like I said, feel free to contact me via email or call me. Um, I'd be glad to provide any follow-up information. And the report is available on cancer.org and can be ordered as well. Thanks so much for your time today.